Magazine Nancy Gibbs, she has walked into the gauntlet. Earlier, we learned that Time Magazine's 2015 Person of the Year is German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Uh, Nancy, the question is, why, 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 why? Because uh, not Donald Trump. Not Donald Trump. Because this year, when a lot of world leaders were tested as never before, no one was tested more than her. Over and over and over again, she was the one who had to step in and address first the economic crisis that could have brought down the Eurozone this summer, then the refugee crisis this fall, now the, the return of terror in Europe. And it. This is someone who has been in office for 10 years. She arguably could have been the person of the year a number of times. But this year really was the one that I think pushed her out in front. As we call her the chancellor of the free world, this is the one who stood up to Putin around Ukraine. This is the one who is fighting But for this sounds like somebody that you want to be person of the year. When Time Magazine has long told us that it is the person who has shaped events for good or ill the most across the world. So I recognize around this table, and no, Mr. Halpert and I were having this fight, that the person who has... A spirited discussion. Fight. The person who has most shaped American politics in the last months is going to be front of mind. But if you think about the, the way we take the peace and prosperity of Europe for granted, because we've had it for the last 70 years, that is the exception to history. But this Nancy, is a continent that has it's not drawn the world table. into war over and over again. It's not around and this she's table. the leader of it. It's not around this table. It's not the last few months. It's not in New Hampshire. It's not in Iowa. Mike Barnacle just came back from Paris. And they are absolutely astounded by what's happening in America and are scared because we are the leaders of the, of the, of the free world. Richard Haas, every time he comes back from overseas, he said the only thing diplomats want to talk to him about global warming, not the Iran deal. It's Trump and what it means to U.S. leadership in the world. And, and I don't dispute the, the amazing change in political discourse that we have had in this country since this summer and the number of times I've lost count of how many times Trump has said something that everyone has considered disqualifying. <laughs> Right. And yet he comes back. So, you know, my what I'm curious about is if it is possible to continually break all the rules and live to play another day, does that mean you rewrite the rules? Mm. We don't know whether this campaign is going to be played by Trump's rules or not. Can anyone else play the game that he is playing? And is he going to be winning votes the same way he has obviously been winning news cycles? I think that the next 12 months are going to tell us an enormous amount about whether or not what he has changed, which I don't dispute, is lasting. We will be here a year from now and have this conversation. And obviously, I've heard a lot also from Bernie Sanders supporters, from Ben Carson supporters. Right. Uh, there's probably a reason why Time has never put a presidential candidate as person of the year, because we know that in the next 12 months, the voters are going to decide. So do, does the piece address uh, the impression held by some, perhaps many, globally, that Angela Merkel is now a more powerful person in terms of her uh, holding office and what she does with her office than the President of the United States. We do, and you know, in a way, what is interesting about her right now is that she was someone who, who practiced the German version of leading from behind. This year, she really stepped out, and, and in a sense, she embodies the central question we're all facing, right? Are we going to open ourselves up or close ourselves off as individuals, mm -hmm. as societies? In that sense, she is the anti-Trump. She is And you're talking about the Syrian ref her Syrian refugee policy. Yeah, she her position is that is that great nations build bridges, not walls. This is someone who grew up behind the Iron Curtain. She is making a very politically risky, arguably strategically risky bet on openness and tolerance and freedom, which is rather a remarkable story Wait, from the leader of Germany. It sounds like Germany. an admirable choice, <laughs> but I don't know that it's the right choice, Mark Halperin. I'm 11% convinced. She's certainly, she's, certainly, she's certainly been at the center of, of the issues around the world in terms of Putin, in terms of refugees, in terms of the economy. I just think she's had some great years where she's performed well and been extraordinarily influential. To me, she's been a backstage player this year. That's what I don't get. Oh, that's interesting, because I would have said this is the year that she took center stage. And, and in, in fact, having been a very, very popular leader with approval ratings any other elected leader would envy, this is the year that she has really taken a hit because the stances she's taken are unpopular. One thing that she has in common with Trump is they have both been compared to Hitler. In her case, for the very strict measures she uh, put in place addressing the Greek debt crisis, um, 
she has she has made herself in a sense much more unpopular by doing things that are much riskier but in her mind are absolutely necessary for the continued say, prosperity you, you of don't Europe. know if trump's going to be in power a year from now we don't know that about angela merkel either that's that's true of every elected leader that's the yeah, but, but i mean she's she's in in more uh, a more tenuous position today than she's been with the german voters isn't she her actually even just in these last few days partly because of the strong position she's taken about um, combating isis her those numbers have turned around she is not as popular as she was before she Right. made her position on the refugee crisis. In terms of global impact, what about al-Baghdadi and ISIS? Well, this is the other fascinating question that I was going to challenge you. Do you, If you were choosing between Donald Trump and al-Baghdadi, and again, we're measuring influence, right. impact on the news, on events. Uh, over the years, <coughs> Time has named any number of, of villains, right. of people who are very divisive, and of people who are considered very heroic. We have run the gamut. Right. So where do you put al-Baghdadi? Well, his power, uh, his power comes from Barack Obama's lack of, lack of resolve against him and against ISIS. So I put him behind Barack Obama. I would actually consider, if not Trump, putting Barack Obama as the most influential person in the world for what he has not done. Hmm. But it's very interesting. You've, you've got to admit, this is the first time that you've been cross-examined over Time Person of the Year. This is an interesting... Mm -hmm. That's the, I mean, we had all these, these arguments quite heatedly within our staff. This is the reason it's, it's an interesting exercise to take a step well, it's back. A it's a great exercise. Yeah. And measure who really affects people, who really affects the news. I think this, this choice will stand the test of time. Uh, it will be very interesting to see where we are a year from now. Election years are always a character test. Yeah. Is that Bush's painting of her? Because Bush did a great painting of her. I went to the museum and saw it. Is it? This is a, a painter named Colin Davidson. Oh, in Belfast. Well, he paints. Well, George W. Bush, your former boss, will be very, very pleased that you. Uh, he's become <laughs> a very good work. painter, and it looks a lot like his uh -huh. style. His style. Very good. All right, Nancy, thank you for coming here. Nice to see you. The, 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 uh,